What do you need to know or do to succeed with whole class video presentations? Well, let's look at it in three pieces. Before, during, and after. Before you show a video, take the time to preview the whole thing all the way through. Watch it all. Listen to it all. Don't take any shortcuts here. It's not fun to be surprised by something you didn't realize was there. Shorter is better. When you're choosing videos, look for ways to use small chunks of video. Nobody wants to sit and watch a 20 or 30 or 40 minute video just to get the little two or three minutes of nuggets inside the video. More about that in another segment. Also, before you use a video, think about how you'll be using it in the classroom in terms of your technical needs. What equipment will you be using? And don't overlook one of the most often overlooked pieces of equipment, and that's the sound. Nobody wants to watch a video. You get my point. Once you've prepared before the video by making sure that it is exactly what you want, you've previewed it, you've watched it all the way through, picked the best, shortest possible solution to what you're trying to accomplish, and double-checked all of your technical aspects, you're ready to actually show the video to the class. As part of the presentation, make sure that you make your expectations clear to the class. What do you want them to do during the video? What questions do you want them to consider and be prepared to answer when the video is finished? How do you want them to focus? On what do you want them to focus? Check for comprehension during the course of the video by using your friend the pause button. There's nothing more powerful than that. To stop right in the middle of the video and deal with perhaps new vocabulary that popped up and you might have forgotten to tell them about before the video, but think about the power of stopping that video and discussing it right there, seizing that teachable moment. It's not as distracting as you would think. In fact, it's better than losing a student and the rest of the video being ineffectual and ineffective uh, because they didn't understand something or didn't comprehend something clearly. Also, the power, the pause button can help you emphasize key points. The pause button used during your presentation can give you the opportunity to engage students both collectively and individually. Stop that video and ask a student to come up and point out on the screen something that others may have missed. Think about the benefit to that student and to others. While the video is playing, during the presentation of the video itself, you pay attention to the students. Walk among the students. You don't want to be a distraction, but think about how much more attention they're going to pay if you're paying attention to the video and to them. When the video is over, the most important part comes, the after. Video should not be the purpose. Video should be a means to an end. Effective video used in a whole class environment is a hook. It's a springboard that takes you to places you might not have been able to easily go without the use of that tool. Think about what's going to happen after the video, where you're going, where it's going to take you, where you're going to launch the class and your students at the end of the video, and make sure you're prepared for that. Some advice from master teachers with lots and lots of experience using video in the classroom. I hear it all the time and I want to pass it along to you. Start small. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't be overwhelmed by the possibilities. There are many. But if you keep it simple, you'll be more effective. Remember, you're building your library, your portfolio of videos as you go. So one or two videos for an entire unit or week is plenty at the beginning to start with. You'll be glad you did. Pace yourself. And finally, be prepared for technical difficulties. Yes, they will happen. It happens to the best of us. It's the nature of technology. But be prepared for it. Have a plan B. Think just a little bit about what you're going to do if you have problems. And it's remarkable how you dramatically reduce the possibility of problems when you have a plan B.